Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to the second part of the episode number 17, where we started seeing how to create a more dynamic and modular class to handle the generation of custom fields. If you didn't watch the previous episode, please stop and watch it because this is a cut. This is a, a, the second part of that episode. So without the first one, you are gonna be pretty confused, but let's jump right into it. Enjoy. So let's scroll all the way down here and let's create a method called public function called set settings. And basically we're using the same method name of the settings API. I'm not sure this is a, like a good practice, but it's not a problem. We're not gonna override anything because we're not extending the settings API. We're just like triggering the settings API. So that method, we cannot tap it. We cannot override it. So that's, that's okay. It's not a problem, but let's create this to store our settings. And then we're gonna have also the method to store our fields and to store our section and then pass everything to whatever we want to do. So here, let's first create an argument that is going to be a multidimensional array. And the first parameter of my array is just my initial fields that it's going to be right now for as an example, I don't want to go too much over your head. So it's going to be like pretty simple. Let's call the three parameters that we need to use in our settings API. So if we scroll all the way back here, we know that our register setting accepts three parameters, the option group, the option name, and a callback. So let's create the option underscore group. And the option group needs to be a unique name that we will use every time we need to add new settings to this type of fields or this type of container. In my case, I'm gonna use this as alicad underscore options underscore group. Just as an example, we can change all this stuff later or you can change stuff by yourself. So group, perfect. Then the second parameter is the option underscore name. And the option name needs to be the same exact name that we're gonna use for our custom field. So the ID of our custom field. In this case, I wanna just give it an example like text underscore example. Just I'm gonna call it like that, then we're gonna change everything, but it's not a problem for now. And then the third parameter is the callback. And the callback, it's gonna be, as usual, array. We can use what we learned from the previous lesson, the this callbacks that calls a uniquely declared method that basically I'm gonna call alicad option group, but of course alicad options group, all camel case, and let's create that method in our callback. So here, scroll the way down, public function, alicad options group, the setting pass automatically whatever field we declare. So in our case here, we declare an option name, the text example, in my case, I'm gonna create these, uh, I'm, I'm gonna handle these as an input field. So we're gonna get a callback with the actual input. And what we need to do here, we need to simply return the input. This callback is necessary if, for example, this input, we need to do some modification here before returning the input. If, for example, we wanna validate the input, if we're accepting, I don't know, the um, a Twitter handle and we wanna remove the hat, uh, symbol or we are accepting the password and uh, before saving it we wanna we wanna encrypt it or if we are storing the email and we wanna check if we already have that email in the database we don't wanna save that data if it's already there we know all the validation in this callback so the options group it's basically every time we have a new field that it belongs to this option group we need to repeat the idea of the field inside this option group and handle the callback to basically handle whatever process we're gonna have for that field. I know it's super confusing, but that's how WordPress works, unfortunately. So now we have these arguments, we can call the setters for the settings and pass these arguments. So we're gonna populate the settings. So let's say dollar this settings, let's call the set settings. And let's pass our arguments variable wonderful. Let's do the same for the section. So let's copy these and let's change these for sections. And here the array of argument is basically um, 
the same that we declare here, not in the callback, sorry, in the section we have the ID title callback and the page. So in my case, it's gonna be ID title callback and then another parameter that it's page. Let's change this immediately, otherwise we're gonna forget sections and we can pass the arguments because it's a variable declared inside a method, so it's not outside, it's not gonna interfere with these other arguments. And here, let's change a bunch of stuff. First, we need to declare the ID of our section in order to use it to print it and do all the other kind of weird stuff that we wanna do. So in my case, for now, I'm gonna just call it admin underscore index because I'm gonna print it in the admin index, but this is just temporary. The title is something that we're gonna print, so let's just call it settings for now, just an example. And again, here we can uh, call our callback in order to handle whatever we wanna print in our um, sections. And the section usually is used just to print content, so it's not really necessary to have a callback, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna create a callback, simply alicad admin section, something like that. Uh, let me create the actual public function alicat admin section. We will not get any parameter from this and we can echo just a message to say uh, check this beautiful section or something like that, I don't know. That's super silly, but semicolon at the end as usual. Okay, and the page, the last parameter that we need to pass is the actual page where these is gonna get printed. And in order to get the actual proper page where we wanna print this section, basically we need to refer to the menu slug of our first page, that in our case is Alicat plugin. But if you wanna print that settings in the, I don't know, custom post type sub page, you need to grab the menu slug of that specific page. So in my case, it's gonna be just Alicat plugin. Let's print it here as a string. Perfect, we are setting the section, awesome. And the last thing that we have to do, finally, we need to set the fields. And also in this case, we can copy all this stuff and it's gonna be ah, so good when we're done. And then let's replace these to set fields. Let's copy these and let's update also these. And the arguments of the fields, if we check again, are six. The ID, title, callback, the page, then the sections that we just declare and then a list of arguments. So let's do it. First, we have the ID that needs to be identical to the ID that we declare for the setting. So in our case is the option name text example. So let's declare the ID as text example. This is super confusing, but that's how WordPress works. If you have a field, a field needs to be inside a setting group and the option name of that group needs to be identical to the ID of the field. Super weird, but that's how WordPress works, sorry. The title is gonna get printed when we print the actual field, so in my case it's just uh, text example, whatever. The callback, also in this case we need to declare what callback we wanna do with our field, and in our case we wanna print just a simple HTML input field, so let's create a callback to text example let's copy this and let's create a proper callback public function text example and yeah we can simply echo an input field an html input field so let's generate the input field then it's going to be a type of text and then class we're going to use like a built-in class of wordpress that it's inside uh, the administration address or regular text these are all like standard thing the name needs to be identical to the id that we gave to this field so in our case is text example and then we want to put the value and the value should be exactly like the value that we gave or we inputted inside our custom field. And the custom field, it's called, as I said, text example. So what we can do, we can simply get the option of the text example and then print it here. We're gonna do it in a second. The placeholder, uh, just to have something nice to look at, it's gonna simply be text example or something like, write something here, whatever. Then we close the input tag. Okay, here we wanna print the value because 
When you access this page the first time, the input is completely empty. But when you save it, you want this value to be filled with the whatever value you saved. So in order to do that, we need to create a variable called value or whatever you want to call it. It's totally up to you. And then we can escape the attribute, always escape the attribute when you deal with user data and get the option value of our previously declared unique field that in our case is text example. And if you notice, it's exactly the same as the name. Wonderful. Now we can print our value by stopping the echo and then with dots with the periods, we concatenate the printing of our value. Perfect. Okay. We're so close. <laughs> Another bunch of things we need to do here. We need to update the page. Actually, we don't need to update the page because the page is identical to the section that we're going to use to print that page. We want these to print in the same section that this section is getting generated, whatever. Then we need to declare, of course, the section and the section, of course, has to have the same ID of the section that we're going to use to print this stuff. So let's copy the alicat admin index ID of the section. So we're going to say, hey, these fields that we're generating here are inside this section. Awesome. And then we can pass a bunch of arguments. There are a lot of arguments for the fields. For now, we're going to just for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to pass just a bunch of arguments, just two arguments that are kind of like the most important or like to give you an example of what you can customize with this. And also the list of arguments, it's an array. So let's open another array inside the arguments. And a couple of default arguments of WordPress are the label for that is the actual arguments to generate a label for this field with the title of this field. And let's give this option the same name of the field. So we're going to say to WordPress, hey, let's generate a label that is attached to this field itself. And then the other argument, we can give some class to this actual field. If we want to uh, add some unique class around the container, the HTML container that gets generated, let's just write example class. So we're going to see where this gets printed. Fantastic. Now we are storing the fields. So Finally, in cascading fashion, we are settings, the settings. It's so, so weird. We're setting the settings. We're setting the section and then we're setting the fields. The only thing that we have to do, we have to finally trigger the register custom fields that we can do after we set all of this. So in order to call these methods, let's go back in our register method. And after all this stuff, we can say dollar this set settings and then dollar this set sections and then dollar this set fields and after we did all of this we need to update the register method of our settings api in order to trigger with the action the admin init action of wordpress that unique method that we generated so these beautiful register custom fields so let's go in the settings api all the way up inside the register and we can do another check so let's check if the variable settings is not empty so we can be sure to not accidentally trigger whatever we want to do let's add an other action uh, in this case the action of wordpress is admin in it where we can declare all our custom fields and the admin in it we need to pass again the usual array but in this case we're going to pass this instance and let's tap the method that we just created the register custom fields boom and semicolon at the end let's save it let's go back in our administration error let's refresh Perfect. We don't have any PHP error. We don't have any issue. But the thing is that we're not printing anything, of course, because we didn't update our template. So if we access our admin.php, that is the template that we're using for the page where we attached all our fields, it's completely empty. So in order to print all the custom section, all the custom fields 
inside this thing, we can simply use built-in methods of WordPress in order to print those things automatically. And also this video was pretty long, so I had to split it again <laughs> and uh, basically put the last part in the last video. I apologize for this super long tutorial, but this was a really complicated section and we just finished the second part. So just have fun with these, all the knowledge that you gained from this video and the next and last part for the settings API will be released in a couple of days. Thank you so much guys and as usual, happy coding!